What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, bringing you my NHL playoffs third round reaction video. Uh, it's been a couple of days since the uh, the third round came to a close because the NHL has finally decided to give uh, guys like me uh, a break and give us a couple of days between rounds starting. Uh, it was probably something that they could have given the New York Rangers, but, you know, that unfortunately did not happen, and uh, we're, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but this is uh, the way that I reacted to uh, the third round. Uh, I'll get it right out of the way by saying I was 2-0 and in predicting the third round, uh, which brings my overall playoff predicting record to a 500 level, 7 correct, and 7 incorrect. Uh, so I have a chance, if I properly predict the Stanley Cup Final Series, which you'll see in the next video, uh, then I will finish above 500, which I just barely failed to do uh, when I was talking about the uh, NFL playoffs. So I, I, I'm, fingers crossed, it's crunch time, and I, I got these two series right, uh, read them pretty well perfectly, and uh, I, was, I was very lucky uh, to get that. So let's talk about the two the two third round series that are now in the books. Uh, the Eastern Conference Finals between the number one seeded New, uh, New York Rangers, sorry, and the number six seeded New Jersey Devils. I have a big bottle of water today. Go big or go home. Uh, outcome of this series, New Jersey won this series in six games. I had predicted that New Jersey was going to win the series in seven games. Um, basically what I thought about this series, um, you look at a team like the Rangers who have, this was their first time with this group, uh, getting into the conference finals, and I think later on in the series it kind of showed, especially, uh, Lundqvist's, uh, inexperience at this level, uh, but... Throughout this whole series, the Rangers' best players didn't play like their best players, and I've been saying it all playoffs. If you're going to get somewhere, your best players have got to be your best players. And up until this point, you could make the argument that they had been. Uh, Brad Richards was is uh, way up there in playoff scoring, as is Marion Gabrick. In this series, Gabrick and Richards combined for five points in six games. That's not your best players being your best players. Um, you need much better production from guys that you're paying a ton of money to to be leaders, offensive leaders on your team. You need better performances out of guys like Marion Gabrick and Brad Richards. Uh, and then you look at a guy like Henrik Lundqvist. Lundqvist in this series... Uh, You've heard of A Tale of Two Cities. In this series, Lundqvist was a tale of two goalies. In New York's two wins in this series, they were both shutouts, and Lundqvist looked fantastic in both of those games. In their four losses in the series, Lundqvist gave up at least three goals every game. He gave up 13 goals in those four losses. Uh, and I'm sure if you ask him now, he would gladly give up those two shutouts, average out those 13 goals over the six, the full six-game series. Because if he would have given up, well, let's say, let's say two goals a game, that would give him 12 goals against instead of 13. If he would have, if you would have taken that, averaged it out, two goals a game for all six games, New York's win in this series. They, they would win two games outright, two more games go to overtime, and in overtime it's anyone's game. If Lundqvist would have played more consistently, that's the point I'm trying to make, if Lundqvist would have played more consistently in all six games, New York would be winning this series and New York would be going on. Even with the offensive problems that they had in this series, if they would have gotten consistent play from Lundqvist, two goals against a game, New York's win in this series. Uh, unfortunately, they did not get that. Lundqvist did not look good in a couple of the games. Uh, I still think he's the Vesna winner, and I still think he's the Hart Trophy winner. But, um, you know, it just in a couple of games here, he just looked bad. And everyone's sort of trying to figure out why New York kind of fell apart here. And I don't care what John Tortorella says or what any of the players say. Fatigue was a major factor in this series for the Rangers. Um, 
including the end of the regular season. They actually they posted this on NHL.com, but I was, of course, an idiot and didn't notice it, and I actually went through and did all the number crunching and research by myself. Um, including the end of the regular season, New York played 41 games in a span of 81 days. Now, yes, they had four days off between the end of the regular season and the beginning of the playoffs. But then once the playoffs started, they played 20 games in 43 days without two full days of rest in between any games. Based on the fact that they went to seven games in both of their first two series. They did not have two days off consecutively throughout the entire playoffs. And I'm sorry, fatigue has to be a factor. It's the only way to explain how you saw New Jersey make a number of mental errors in this series that New York was not able to capitalize on. You have to imagine if this was a fresher team who maybe played a couple fewer games in the first couple of rounds, New York is the level, the cal sorry, the caliber of team that they're going to jump on those mistakes and they're going to make New Jersey pay. It didn't happen. And you saw New York making uncharacteristic mistakes, sloppy play, sloppy penalties. They didn't block as many shots in this series as they had been averaging for the first two. Um, New York was ground down by the fact that they played the equivalent of 15 games in the first two rounds. And what did I say in my prediction video? I said if this series goes deep, six games, seven games, New York could potentially run out of gas. And I feel like they did, especially for the last two games with a particular emphasis on Lundqvist. I think Lundqvist, I think, I think he was out of gas. I, just, I, I absolutely believe that he was out of gas. One of the big reasons why the Rangers, I believe, ran out of gas in this series is the Devils' fourth line. The Devils' fourth line, Stephen Gionta, Ryan Carter, and Steve Bernier. Only averaged about 8 to 10 minutes of ice time a game, but they made the most of their ice time. Not only with hard forechecking, aggressive play, that line produced 9 points in 6 games and only took 12 penalty minutes. They only took 6 penalties in 6 games. That The Devils' fourth line proved how valuable depth is in the NHL playoffs. They have they had that fourth line that the Rangers uh, five man decor and 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 their depth just simply could not handle with the way that the with the way that the fourth line for the Devils came out and played each and every game. Um, I mean no, like I said, nine points from your fourth line in six games, that's pretty phenomenal to me. And again only taking six penalties. And, you know, Marty Brodeur, what, what else do you say? Martin Brodeur turned back the clock. Uh, did he ever? I mean, the dude's 40 years old, uh, looking to win another Stanley Cup 17 years after he won his first one. Um, you know, what do you say about Marty Brodeur? In the final two games... And again, you got to put this in context. In the final two games of this series, this is a tied series. Every inch of ice in this series has to be fought and scrapped and scratched and clawed for. A tied series. Martin Brodeur took this team on his back and propelled them to the cup finals. 58 saves on 63 shots in the final six periods of this series including 33 of 35 in the overtime clinching uh, game six. I mean, you can't say enough about Marty Brodeur. He, he did. He took this team on his back in conjunction with the Devils' fourth line, their depth, their top end scoring, and they just they willed themselves past the Rangers, and the Rangers simply ran out of gas and did not have any answers. So we have the New Jersey Devils, as I predicted, going to the Stanley Cup Finals to meet the Los Angeles Kings, the Cinderella of Cinderella stories. Uh, in the Western Conference, it was the number three seeded Phoenix Coyotes taking on the number eight seeded Los Angeles Kings. Los Angeles won this series in five games. I predicted they would win in six games.
Did you notice me spill a little water there? That was classy. Um, this was this was a closer series than four games to one would have you believe. Um, and as the series went on, the series got tighter and tighter and tighter. And I'm sure L.A. fans were a little, those last couple of games, because Phoenix played L.A. very, very well, especially in games four and five. Um, you know, the series just got tighter. The first two games of this series, L.A. outscored Phoenix 8-2 to two and looked like they were going to run all over them, like they ran all over Vancouver, like they ran all over St. Louis. But in games 3-5, to five, scoring was even. Scoring was 6-6. Six, six. This was a very close series for those last couple of games, and that made the last few games extremely entertaining to watch. Um, L.A. proved to me, anyways, that they can bounce back from adversity, because when Phoenix finally sort of rung their own bell and was like, look, if we don't bring the house, we're not, we're going to get swept out of this place. When Phoenix brought the house, when they brought everything that they were capable of bringing, L.A. absorbed it and proved that they could fight through it to the victory. Um... And that's something that I think every team that's going to win a championship needs to do at some point. They need to break through adversity. And I think L.A. displayed that they can do that. Um, this series could have gotten ugly. Uh, if L.A. didn't clinch when they did, uh, this series could have gotten very ugly. You had the Dustin Brown hit on, uh, on Michael Roosevelt in Game 5. And if you went back a couple games to Game 2, Dustin Penner, who ended up scoring the series-winning goal in overtime in Game 5, uh, threw Antoine Vermette in a WWE-style headlock, right? Uh, this series could have got ugly, and that reflected in the uh, in the handshakes after game five you'll you'll uh, notice that a couple of guys on uh, phoenix were really giving it to dustin brown for that hit um and vermette was in um was in penner's ear about that about that headlock and that was three games ago so i mean this this series could have gotten ugly had it gone on and this could be the birth of a new rivalry these are two underrated, understated franchises, even though, yes, one of them is in Los Angeles, and it's a big market, but it's not a big hockey market. It hasn't been a big hockey market for a while. Um, this could be the start of a new rivalry, and I think this would be fantastic for the NHL. Um, as I mentioned before, Los Angeles has made history. Los Angeles is only the second number eight seed since the new format in the Stanley Cup playoffs to make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. However, they are the only number eight seed in NHL history to make the Stanley Cup Finals and in doing so beat the number one, number two, and number three seed in the conference to get there. Because, of course, when Calgary made it in, I think it was 04, 05, or 05, 06, or something like that, I think they beat a number five seed instead of one of the top three ones, somewhere along the line. Um, but in any case, um, Los Angeles has made history. Uh, and they they just have that feel about them that, you know what, you can bring everything you're going to bring and you're still not going to stop us. And L.A. is going to be very, very difficult to contend with. Um, we look at Phoenix. I thought Phoenix played a really good series uh, for the most part. And the question, of course, is always going to be raised, what is the future of the franchise in Phoenix? I've opened my mouth and gone on record saying Phoenix, Arizona is not a hockey market. It's a baseball market, it's a basketball market, it's a football market, but it is not a hockey market. And still, to this day, I will say Phoenix, Arizona is not a hockey market. But at the same time, is having this team make the conference finals in the Western Conference, I can only imagine that that's going to be a good thing for this team and for the NHL trying to find prospective owners. Um, is it going to be enough in the long term to keep the Phoenix franchise in Arizona? I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I Again, I still don't think that Phoenix is a hockey market, but if they have a couple of years here of continued playoff success, winning playoff series, going deep, um, maybe even making a cup finals appearance, I, I don't know. I mean, 
you know they have the whole underdog thing on them it's not it's not impossible um it could be enough to keep this franchise in Phoenix long term. I don't know. That's looking way too far into the future for me. Um, that's how I reacted to the third round. Um, I thought it was two very good playoff series. Um, I was very happy to see that my predictions went 2-0. and oh. Just want to take a second here in this to um, throw out my congratulations to the Shawinigan Cataracts last night, defeating the London Knights 2-1 in overtime on home ice to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup for 2012. And remember what I said about Los Angeles, that they had this feel about them, that they're just this team that, you know, you're not going to beat us, and, and every championship team has to face some kind of adversity. I look at what Shawinigan had to go through in this Memorial Cup tournament. Um, they became, I believe, the first team first or second team in the history of the Memorial Cup to win the tournament after having to play in a tiebreaker game. They had to play a tiebreak game just to make it into uh, into the playoff round. And I don't think... There, there might have been one other team that did it. I can't remember. But then, to play that tiebreaker game, win that tiebreaker game on home ice, then win their next game, then go up against the London Knights, one of the most celebrated franchises in Canadian junior hockey, and beat them in overtime on home ice to win the Memorial Cup. Very exciting. Congratulations to Shawinigan fans. Um... Uh, it's so, it looked to me like it was a pretty uh, a pretty rabid and passionate fan base to me. So it's it's always good to see a fan base like that get rewarded. Uh, many congratulations to Shawinigan and to London, of course, as well for making. I mean, you know, you made the finals of the Memorial Cup. You got nothing to hang your heads about. You got a great team. Uh, a lot of players on that team, I think, are going to make NHLers. So congratulations to both London and Shawinigan for their performances in the Mastercard Memorial Cup. That's it for me for this video. Next video, of course, is going to be my prediction video for the Stanley Cup Finals. Make sure not to miss it. Uh, I've got some other stuff that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on here for some upcoming videos, including whether or not I think Brock Lesnar is a UFC Hall of Famer. So check out that video. Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Once again, check out the Stanley Cup Finals prediction video, which I'm going to post right after this one.